Oh, welcome. <laughs> so we, um, we are very happy to be with you tonight. I'm Julien Loïc. I'm a founder of the CERC, which is an arts consultancy in Hong Kong. And we have the pleasure to have uh, online, so Professor Beatrice Royer-Brunel, who is uh, the chair of digital humanities at the University of Geneva, and also a historian of multimedia and digital art. Hello, Beatrice. Um, we have with us uh, Benoit Couty, who is co-founder and artistic head of the NXT factory in uh, Paris, and also the founder of the Museum of Crypto Art. Hello, Benoit. And Hello. With... Hello, everyone. And with us here, we have uh, Waylon Ip, uh, who is a conceptual artist from Hong Kong and the founders of Screens Guru. Uh, so tonight, we will talk about uh, NFTs indeed and the importance of NFTs in the arts. Um, we will start the conversation together, and of course, after questions are, of course, very welcome. So um, I think what would be nice to start with is to define a little bit what's NFT, basically, because we are familiar with it, but uh, maybe not so much. And uh, do you think that all digital art has to be NFT or NFT can also be not digital art? Question for our panelists. Hi, who's, who's going to start? So Go for it, Benoit. Yes. So uh, thank you for having me. I would be... It would have been so nice to be here with you, but uh, you know, uh, I can still be here, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, NFT, so it it means uh, non fungible token, but um, uh, everyone has his own definition. Uh, maybe the best way to define it for me is like uh, NFT is a certificate of ownership uh, of a digital file. Uh, it works also for um, physical uh, objects, but it's, it raises many uh, issues. But for digital files, so for, for assets that are natively digital, uh, this certificate of ownership that is uh, registered on blockchain is just a perfect thing uh, to, to, to show who is the owner. It's, it's just like um, the example, the comparison I want to make often is uh, when you have a car, uh, who owns the car? Is it the one who's... Uh, driving the car? Is it the one whose name is on the list of uh, the registered plate? Uh, basically, uh, the owner of a car is the one whose name is on the registry, uh, on the ownership registry, because everyone relies on this registry to, to know who's the owner of the car. And it's the same for NFT. The NFT is the, is the certificate. It's on a registry, and everyone agrees that the name on this registry is the owner of this uh, file, which uh, could be... Um, an artwork or, or, or land in the metaverse or whatever. And it works perfectly for digital assets. Uh, there are some, some case, use cases for physical assets, but it's, uh, it raises a whole different uh, uh, kind of issues. So uh, this is maybe what, what, how I would define NFT. Thank you. And I think on, on the other side of, of the coin, if I can say, is also register with the creator of the digital file. Uh, which is is kind of a very big revolution, and we will talk about that. Uh, so first question is for you, Beatrice. Um, so the NFT, as we just mentioned, is a, a certificate of both the copyright, who is the creator of the artworks, and also its authenticity. Um, so you are an historian, you know uh, very well how the arts evol evolved. What do you think are the progress that it brought, it brought to the artist, um, and also at the, at the way around, does it also add some kind of uh, role, some kind of burden for them? Well, when it was invented in 2014, uh, at the beginning, it was not so well known among artists, but after maybe you heard of this uh, huge sale uh, of people's artwork, which made $69.3 million in March uh, 2029, 21, sorry. And uh, since then, uh, we can say that artists have realized that NFTs is great for them and is, is a progress for them. How is it a progress? First, that they can, they, they can sell digital items, they can sell digital artworks, they can sell digital images, digital sound, digital videos, which was not the case before. So to say uh, what wasn't it the case, it wasn't the case because uh, when they, if they wanted to sell an artwork, a digital artwork, uh, they could sell many, many, they could see many copies circulate and there was no proof, no, no, proof, no clue that uh, a specific file was owned by a specific owner. So now which, what is new is that it is possible for them to sell 
digital files and they don't have to materialize their work if they want uh, to sell it, which was uh, uh, before NFTs, if digital artists wanted to sell something, they had to make it material. They had to show uh, an image on a screen, on a video on a screen. They you know, they would sh they would sell the screen. They would sell an experience like immersion, uh, people coming in a, in a room and uh, and uh, 3D uh, uh, um, um, experience of the work. So this is the first thing that is very new. Second thing that is very important for artists is that now. Uh, they they can they can get a resale right. What is resale right? It means that uh, when a new transaction is made on the work, the artist will obtain a percentage of the amount, which is also so new for them. You, you see, in the history, you can see as soon as the, the 19th century, you can see uh, 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 phenomena when when artists who were unknown, sold their works at very low prices, and then dealers came and collectors raised the bills without the creator uh, getting a cent. So now with the blockchain, it is very new, but uh, the blockchain uh, records all the transactions of NFTs. So they can, it can deduce uh, a percentage from each sale uh, that would be uh, paid automatically to, automatically to the artist. This is also a very important thing for artists because they can create an artwork even if they are not so well known, maybe in 10 years, the artwork will get a, a higher price and will be sold again. And then they will get a, a kind of living from, from, from this uh, former previous, uh, previous work. And maybe finally, a third um, new thing uh, with NFTs, maybe it has more to do with, uh, with art theory. It is that now there is no competition between uh, between value, the value of art, its aura, and uh, multiplicity. You, you see, before, uh, for an artwork to be valuable, to be uh, considered important, so to say, uh, it had to be unique. Now it is not the case. Artworks don't have to be unique. And even, it's even better that the art, that the, that the file, that the image circulates a lot, that it is reproduced a lot, uh, for the work to to get uh, an aura, to get uh, uh, to get known, and for an artist to get a reputation. So this is also very new for for art theory, and it is very possible that uh, we will have uh, new books written by art philosophers and theorists who have to think of this new state of uh, of things. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something we realize indeed is that the role of the collector finally is also changing in a way that now the collectors are the what promoting the works, promoting the artists, as you said, showing it on their social media and something like that. And that creates a, a different relationship between the artists and the collectors, where before you had the gallery as a medium or, or the auction house or the museum, as we say. Uh, and I think that's something very new. And that's part of what you are doing, right, Benoit, with the NFT factory, for example. Yes, um, I, I was lucky enough to discover this uh, very early, and I was one of the first uh, in France to uh, to collect those artworks. When I discovered it, I was uh, really amazed. Uh, I'm an art lover, but I never really collected art. And when I, when I discovered that, I, I I knew already the digital art and everything. And what I saw was very different. What I saw was very different from, from the digital art I knew. I felt a lot of uh, spontaneity, a lot of, uh, uh, it was fresh, you know, it was very really fresh. And uh, I was, uh, and then I contacted those, those artists and uh, because it was a very small community at the time. And I, I, I immediately, uh, No more sounds. Wait, you're mute, uh, Benoit. You're mute. Benoit, you're mute. New mic. Benoît, we can't, we can't hear. On vous entend pas, vous êtes... Benoît, vous êtes... <laughs> Benoît. Benoît, on vous entend pas. Benoît. De... <laughs> oh. Benoît. We have to, to, to read on his lips. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's a performance. <laughs> But, yeah. But before he comes back, anyway, Benoit, you were mute. Oh, we didn't hear anything. 
Depuis une minute. Ok. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So you said you were contacted with the artist and you discovered that. And yes, yes, and uh, uh, you can hear me now. So I, I, I understood that there, are, there were, if they had a really deep uh, uh, message and practice. They are a real artist, and they had a message about the crypto value. So this is what maybe makes difference between crypto art and digital art uh, with NFTs. The crypto art, the crypto artist. They, um, they enter this technology because they believe in this technology and all the values that are behind this technology, which is decentralization, uh, empowerment, uh, individual uh, uh, empowerment, um, uh, all those things. And uh, they believe in the technology and they, they, do, they, they, they give the message in their art about this technology. And, uh, and it, can shows also, it shows also in the aesthetics and the thematics that they use. Uh, we can see a lot of glitch, for instance. There's a lot of glitch in crypto art. And the glitch, the symbolic of glitch, is the disruption. You know, that uh, there is, a, because, you know, you have the very clean image that we show. And then there's a glitch, which means that maybe something was wrong with the uh, current system. And, or maybe there's something trying to send a message by hacking the, uh, the system. So the, the, this glitch, um, uh, yes, the, the glitch is very present. And it means something. And also the thematics are very interesting. A lot of uh, crypto artists from the beginning, um, they, sh they, they work on the, the thematics of uh, doom. So the end of the world and the Renaissance. And they refer, they, they, they show a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Vanitas or Memento Mori, so skulls. And they also show, uh, they work on the thematic of Renaissance. And they also refer a lot to artists uh, from the old ages, like from the Renaissance. And basically everything before uh, contemporary art. So it's like they 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 don't they, they want to reconnect with uh, the art that was taking place uh, before contemporary art. And this is something also I want to say. Contemporary art um, uh, lately uh, has become maybe uh, kind of official art and maybe disconnected with people. Uh, because who, who, who do you know uh, uh, among you? Do you know people who collect contemporary art? It's not possible to collect cont contemporary art. Contemporary art is not designed to be to interact uh, with uh, people and that uh, people can invest or buy or or collect. And uh, crypto art is the is the completely different. There are hundreds of thousands of people who collect crypto art, and by collecting crypto art, it's not only financial investment. It's believing in the artist, and you know when you when you buy an uh, an artwork, you you send a message to the artist. I like what you do. I like the message you have. I want to support you, and people can do that now. They couldn't do it with uh, contemporary art. And so it it uh, it brings an interesting question that I want to ask to Welung, for, for example. So with with uh, crypto art, we realize that there is also a change in the techniques. You know, before you just take a canvas and you paint. But now you have a lot of different uh, medium. You have a lot of uh, skills that are required, and that change regularly. So, do you think it 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 uh, it helps you? It frees you with more more uh, options of techniques, or at the contrary, do you need to be, you know, very very strong technicians before being a creator, an artist? Mm. Well, uh, oh, so it's... I was asking to uh, Wayne first, but of course we can discuss that. Okay, uh, I think uh, it depends how we define technologies. You know, uh, even that's just a pencil is also technology. So actually, I think uh, because I'm actually a digital artist, so uh, even when I create video artwork, it's it's actually a technology. So I I think it really depends how you define what is a technology. Uh, and and also for me, it's it's so important to actually define. Uh, that's a whole category of artists actually uh, professional chain as a uh, study in computer science and then they do art through their techniques and another group of artists they actually more concept driven and then they uh, visualize their concept through the technology so I think that's divided into that two groups so it really depends for for the conceptual artists I don't think they have they need to have that professional deep in love uh, to produce our work. They can just collaborate with the technician to produce our work. Yeah, that's my point. Benoit, you wanted to add something? 
Yes, uh, in fact, uh, it's important to understand. It's very easy to create an NFT. It's really easy. You just have to understand how it works. It's a, but if someone teaches you, it's like a half an hour. Uh, you can you can you can have your wallet. You can uh, you can create and mint your first artwork as an NFT in half an hour. It's very easy. Anyone can do that. So the the technology hurdle is not there. Uh, uh, and then the, when you look at artists, what they how they create their artworks, uh, they use a lot of uh, you know tools that are available uh, for free online, like uh, uh, small apps that uh, are, uh, are used to to transform images, to create images. Even the AI, you know, the AI art, which is uh, kind of the top technology. Now you can just uh, you know uh, go online and you ask Google uh, uh, AI. And you can you can uh, open an account and you can start creating art uh, by AI. It's very accessible. So for for me, the technology technological hurdle is not really a problem. Now it's true that uh, artists, some artists, uh, are coders, uh, coders, and they they you they they write their codes themselves. And this is very interesting. And but this is a different level. But uh, you also have a lot of successful artists. Uh, that became very famous lately, who just use their iPad and you know, uh, like uh, everybody's uh, applications like Photoshop or things like that to create art. And this is this has also uh, not a thing value. It doesn't, you know, uh, just like in the real world, uh, anyone can buy uh, brushes and oil paint and a canvas and spread oil paint on a canvas. Uh, it's very easy, but it does not make you an artist. This is what you have to say as an artist that gives you value and uh, your sensibility and everything. Yeah, so I would like to go back a little bit to uh, the relation indeed that uh, the NFT broke completely in the market, the direct relation, as we said, with the collectors and the artists. And something that we can see is that it creates also communities. Of course, a lot of people collecting NFT comes from the gaming industry, you know, from the gaming practice. So they are used also to this kind of avatar, the community. Uh, and it seems that it's really something that uh, comes around now, the, the communities of collectors that they all have the same artists and then they exchange. So what do you think of that? Uh, I think it's a very interesting disruption in the entire way that art was made and that's the relations also between the artists and their collectors. Is that for me? Uh, for everyone. Weyland, maybe can you talk about the people that you are selling to? I mean, what's, what's the relation you have also with uh, mm -hmm. how you, you exhibit your work and how do you Okay, uh, you so know, exchange with, with those. Uh, okay, okay. Um, uh, I think uh, that's two sides. Uh, I think it, it's good that artists actually can talk to the collector directly, but at the same time, the artists require actually have an uh, entrepreneurship. They can, they need to run their own business. You know, they need to promote their artwork. They, there's a lot to do. Mm. No. Every artist actually professional to change to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it really depends. So because some some artists we collaborating with, they are actually doing really good with all this thing, and they sell lots of NFT. And that's another thing I want to sort of, uh, add on is uh I think uh I for now we we see NFT all of the NFTs are rely on the uh, digital artwork. But what we are thinking about is now uh, anything that we can collect data for, we can actually make it like an NFT. Uh, so for example, if we feed this scan the physical object and then uh, we put a RI at the like identity card thing to uh to relocate into the object, we actually can translate the whole data and we put the whole certificate of authentication into the chain. So that's also another way to work with. All those things, yeah. And uh, Beatrice, who, who is very familiar with the evolution also of, of history, uh, I remember when we talked last time, we said you said that you can see some uh, uh, some social effect as well on on the on you know on those new aspects of the NFT. Well, first I would like to say that I was maybe I would like maybe to relativize the idea that no mediations, uh, that all mediations are suppressed because. Uh, as Lung said, uh, artists need uh, to put their art, their work on an infrastructure that they don't master at all. Uh, so there is a kind of uh, aristocracy of uh, blockchain entrepreneurs who built the infrastructure necessary for this, uh, this, uh, this, um, 
this process. And uh, so maybe, uh, so it's very easy for an artist to, to put it, to mint, to mint an artwork, to, to put it on the NFT chain, but uh, so there is no no entry fee, so to say. Well, there is a fee they have to pay, but they can put an artwork in, in on the market. But yeah, still there are mediations. If you want to, uh, for for your artwork to be well known and and to get a chance to be uh, uh, to be to be noticed on the market, you need mediators. And it's not it's not for nothing that uh, that uh, Christie's and Sotheby's have associated or have uh, accepted to associate with. Uh, to, associated with a, a specific uh, um, uh, blockchain or NFT uh, uh, um, uh, platforms. Uh, for instance, Nifty Gateways uh, associated with Christie's or with, uh, with uh, Sotheby's, I, I can't remember exactly. Uh, so there is no entry fee or there is a, a small fee, so to say. Uh, there is no selection. Uh, it's like of uh, Salon des Peintres du Dimanche, as we say in French. Uh, everyone can exhibit. You only pay uh, your fee, entrance fee, and, and then uh, you can put uh, your 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 artwork on the wall. But still, if you want to to sell it and to sell it well, you need mediators. And maybe now, I think I would say it even it's even worse than it was before because uh, if you uh, don't find a way to enter a kind of club. Uh, where uh, a very uh, important collector will talk about you, where a very important dealer will will uh, will promote your work. You you won't make a living about that. You you have no lit very little chance to 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 be to to become some someone well known. Um, and I I I think it's worse than it was earlier because you see. Um, in the 60s, in the 20s, in the 1910s, uh, in, in the 70s, it was for an artist who, who couldn't make a success, um, it was easy to, to, to convert yourself into a dealer. You, couldn't, you could become a dealer. Uh, you had a network, you knew your friends, your colleagues, you knew very well what was new in the, on the market. So you had a kind of a competence that you could valorize in becoming a dealer. And lots of dealers of the 60s, the 50s were actually a, a, a former artist who were intelligent and who realized that, so, okay, there were no genius, but they knew the geniuses, so they could uh, be uh, become dealers. Now it's not possible. You cannot be an artist and become a, a kind of blockchain entrepreneur. Uh, you, you, otherwise, you are already someone very rich and uh, a millionaire who has the money for that. And uh, I think, um, so what is new also is that artists have to uh, give much more energy uh, uh, in building their own networks. And so it's like a kind of burden that they have on their shoulders that they now they have to 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 carry on and, and to, to carry and have to carry on uh, doing that and 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 and, uh, and working on their own uh, on the network, which is uh, much more difficult than it was before, I think. So are you and competition, yes. competition is it's even worse. Competition is worse. So are you saying it's much easier to access the market, but the market is also much, much bigger with much more competition than before, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, I, I have maybe I have something to say. Um, it's incredible the number of artists who I know who um, were from, uh, uh, you know, who had a context where they would never have thought that they, they could, they could, they could, they could be successful. They they didn't know the right people. They were not born in the right place. Uh, they, they were not in the right cities, and still they made it. Uh, and and this is something very new. This is something new, and this is something good. And um, so I have stories about artists, you know, from South uh, South America who were in a small city. And they were artists, but they couldn't reach out to their audience. And with with NFTs, they they became su successful. So they, and there are hundreds of stories like that. And uh, also, when you when you if you are an artist and you are involved in this space and you do your own research, you can still create your own platform. It's not easy, but you can have tutorials. You can have the your peers artists who will help you. 
because it's a very helping community be between artists. So the senior artists who master this uh, thing, creating their own contract, smart contract, creating their own platform, they would be happy to help the other artists to onboard them and to tell them, you don't have to go with the platforms, you, uh, with the you know, a very well-known platform who are centralized. You can do your own thing and we will help you. So there is a, there's a great sense of community. And also uh, in terms of uh, artists who um, uh, before could not uh, make a living and now they can make a living. Believe it or not, there is a trend now with NFT with poetry. So poetry is a trend and now we have poets who um, are making a living selling their poems. Uh, and um, so for me, this is really means something. It means that uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the public reconnects with the artists and uh, you know the, the the art actors. I'm an act actor in the in the NFT. I I'm not a rainmaker. I, I I need the artist. And for me, in this new space, the artists are the rainmakers. They they decide who they work with. There is no exclusivity. Uh, they they. Still, no, I'm no... curious. To, I'm curious to know yeah. what what does make a living means for you. How. Because this is something that we never hear about. How much does a poet, as you say, maybe a kind of a very normal poet uh, making poems that he, he will uh, sell on, 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 on the blockchain, how much make does he, does he make? Do you really think uh, he, he, makes, he makes a living from, from NFTs? Well, uh, not, not a lot, but um, uh, yes, there is an exhibition now in Paris about poetry and NFTs. And I met all those artists. They they all had the same story. They they were struggling to uh, you know to sell something uh, before NFTs, and now they created their poem NFTs, and it sells. And because why? Because because people like it, and uh, and they are, they they made money now. Uh, and they couldn't do it before. So so I, I'm not saying everyone can do that. Again, uh, anyone can write words on the paper. They doesn't make them poets. Uh, but when you are a poet and you are, you have a real uh, talent, uh, you can now uh, sell your poems as NFTs. And I don't know how you did it before. How, how did you make a living before with uh, poetry? I don't even know. Uh, now there is a way. So um, it's uh, it's a fact. I mean, it's, it's something happening now. I'm not saying it's uh, the perfect, but... Uh, uh, and again, uh, the other reaction I have is there is no more exclusivity. I am an important actor in the NFT sector, art. I don't call artists and say, if you want to work with me, you are gonna, you're gonna be only with me. I propose projects to the artists, they refuse or they accept. If they like what I do as a, you know, organizing events and everything, if they like what I do, they will work with me. They will work with me on Monday, they will work with someone else uh, on Tuesday, all right? And I will try to have them. And so it's completely different from what we see, I guess, from the traditional art world, even though I don't really know, but I found out that it was very different. Okay. Wayne, you want to say something? Yeah, I, I think I, what I love the thing now is like uh, the autonomy, the autonomy the artists actually can came on. I, I'm not saying all the artists should move into that thing, but the inclu inclusiveness here is good. I mean, because most of the artists uh, they do anything now, maybe they're not cited in any uh, um, a gallery. And then also, if you walk into the Abbaso, uh, there's only three or four digital art they are actually selling. So I think in that sense, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And something interesting that uh, uh, Benoit, you mentioned, and that we can see here, we have an exhibition of NFT. Recently, we had digital art fair. So it always strikes me the fact that, okay, we are moving indeed everything digital on the platforms online, but it seems that at the end of the day, we still want to see it physically or experience it. Uh, and, and Benoit, you actually created a crypto museum. So what's the relationship that you think... Uh, that, that comes between the, the digital art and the physical, the way that, you know, we still want to see it presented not just on the screen, you know. Yes, yes, I, I really experienced that for three years. It was only digital. I had no connections physically. I, I did not meet physically the people. I did not print uh, the artworks. And uh, after a while, I, I felt the need to, uh, you know, reach out to uh, the real life. And I, I, I decided that I would go in real life exhibition and it was very successful. And even the artists, uh, once they saw the artwork in a physical world, in a screen, 
uh, they saw it differently, and 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 it has a, it has a different um, uh, feeling, you know. Uh, so for me, I understood at that time that it was very important to have uh, in real life uh, events, even if it's digital art. First, because it 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 creates an, uh, a different uh, experience with the artwork, even if it's digital, when you see it in on a big screen and in a, in a in a physical room, and also because it's the only way to reach out to the general public. Uh, the general public doesn't know about all those closed circles of, on Twitter of uh, people collecting uh, crypto art. They don't care. They are not into those circles. But if you create a place where they can walk on the street and they see the sign and they come in, uh, then they, uh, they, they are interested. So, uh, and it's the only way to onboard them. Uh, so this is why I think it's very important to have physical places. This is what we do in Paris here. I'm at NFT Factory. I'm just across the street from Beaubourg. And uh, today is closed, but uh, it will open tomorrow. And we have people walking in the street. They come in, and they don't know anything, and they are they are surprised, and they 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 like it. Isn't it a bit paradoxical to say that basically with the open sea, because it's called this way, that you know everything is there, and we you can reach out everything through the internet. But it seems that at the end of the day, we also need to have a little bit of curation. It seems that you know. So are we are we going back in a way to needing, as you said, some mediation or some curator to select a bit for us, to help us in the overwhelming um, uh, offer to, 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 to make the selection for us, which what is good, what is not. Uh, Beatrice, maybe you, I mean, you've seen that in- Of, in of course we need, we need it. It's normal. It's like, uh, you know, like in, in previous periods, times, because, uh, in, pre in the past, there were too many painters, too many artworks too, and uh, people has always needed introducers to, to a new world because for, for normal people, NFT is a, new, is a new world. So of course, we need people like Benoit who know artists and select what is interesting and maybe uh, put aside what is less interesting and, uh, and also can see tendencies evolving. And this is also very interesting. Um, I, I like the, the image of the street that Benoit said. Uh, you know, uh, if you put, uh, well, it's a different image that I take, but uh, if, you, if you put NFTs on the street, people, uh, when they are in the street, they need the panels, they need the uh, uh, very uh, arrows to see where they want to, to, to go. And if, they, if, they, if there is a, an interesting path or an, another one. So of course it is important. And uh, now we also see uh, people who are specializing in the creation and, uh, and um, comments of uh, NFTs, which is, which is good. Great. I think yes, just uh, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I want to open the floor, uh, the question to the floor, but uh, please, please uh, give your comments before we uh, take the questions. About curation, it's true, it's necessary. Maybe the new thing about NFT and curation is that now um, anyone can try and be a curator. They can be successful or not, like, uh, you know, playlists like uh, Spotify playlist anyone can create a playlist if they are good if, if they are good at it people will look will listen to the playlist uh, it's quite the same with uh, crypto art if someone uh, wants to show something and uh, show the variety of uh, the artworks uh, he can create uh, his curation and if it's if he's good if he's talented as a curator he will have success thank you so we will take some questions don't be shy yes I need no, you can you can let me know and I will repeat to them. But... No, that's a uh, very insightful sharing. Thank you. And uh, uh, I'm just curious about how's the digital adaptation to NFTs mm. in your opinion? Because for us, my background is a uh, traditional artist, so called like I do sculpture and painting. Mm. And currently, I'm running a uh, uh, sort of like art gallery platform to like use NFT into traditional artworks as well, mm -hmm. like a physical form. Yes, yes, yes. So once a buyer buy our artworks, they will have also have the token mm -hmm. together with the physical artworks. So how's your idea into digital application or NFT application into physical artworks or physical objects? Okay. I don't know if you fully heard the question, but I will just repeat basically, um, our our guest is uh, is an artist, physical artist who is doing sculpture and is now uh, asking the question of the digital application of the NFTs. You know how uh, you can uh, apply a token from the blockchain to the, phys the physical work as well. So it, it 
gives the empowerment and the authenticity. So do you have uh, comments on the application? I mean, Wei, I'm, Wei Lung, I'm sure you, you have some, but also uh, on your side. Yes, this is a very um, big debate and big issue in the community. Uh, for me, it's very difficult to have a, a pair of a physical artwork and an NFT, because um, if you do that, uh, you don't know, you are not clear on where is the value. Where is the value? Is it on the physical artworks because it was the original thing that was created by the artist or is it the NFT because this is what you're selling? So, and if you sell a pair, it's, it's impossible to keep the pair together. So uh, it will be disconnected at one, one stage and there will be confusion on where is the value. So uh, for me, I, I don't like to collect uh, artworks who, who are physical artworks with a, a NFT pair. Uh, but if you are a physical artist, you can still work with NFTs. Uh, you are, if you are a sculptor, I understand. There are two sculptors I know who are doing NFTs and they are very successful, but they don't sell their sculptures as NFT. They learned how to make sculptures digitally. And they are they are they are expressing now in a, with a digital like 3D objects uh, that are, have the same aesthetics as their physical uh, sculpture, but it is digital objects. And uh, you have uh, Leo Caillard, who's a French artist, who does that. He's he sculpted marble, but now he's also doing 3D objects. Who looks like his marble sculptures, but they are only digital objects. And also Hermine Bourdin who's a French artist who uh, also carves stones and she, she does physical pieces and she does NFT pieces, but there are different things. They, they, it's not, she's not selling the NFT of her physical work. Well, still maybe, uh, I don't know if it was in the question, but uh, in sculpture, uh, it has been very, very common to make series of sculptures. Uh, a sculpture would make or carve uh, an original which is has never been the original actually if it's a, made of, of clay for instance and then you had a, a, an addition of several multiples of several items uh, uh, from the sculpture and the more items uh, you 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 would produce the less the price uh, would be uh, so um it's also the case with some uh, nft artists they, they 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 do series and you can buy uh one piece among 30 and if there is there are only 30 pieces the price is quite high if there is only two pieces, the price, the price is, is, is even higher. So from, from this side, I would say that uh, the, the practice of making series of selling two pieces of a, one and the same thing, which is not exactly the same, but it's a, a kind of deduction from the original, uh, isn't so new. And it can be the way people interpret the, uh, the fact that some artists sell the original plus a digital version of it, which which can be a kind of 3D reconstruction of the work or just a picture or a photo. You see, in, in 2021, the Hermitage Museum sold NFT uh, uh, reproductions of uh, their artworks. For them, it was a, a way to make money and they needed money. So, um, but people don't think uh, that it's the same thing, that the original is the same as the reproduction, even if the reproduction if, is made as, is minted as an NFT. So I wouldn't say there is a so big issue. Uh, the market always finds a way to, to, va to, to valuate, to value what is, what is scarce. Scarcity is what the, the market values. And as soon as you produce scarcity, be it with original physical items or with digital certificates, as soon as you as you as you have scarcity, you have a way to, to produce value. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just one comment with museums. Uh, indeed, um, there was experiences of museums selling NFTs of their artworks, collections, uh, collections artworks. Uh, in France, they had this discussion. I was there. I, I, I was. Uh, they asked me to give my opinion. Um, they decided that they would not do it. Uh, they didn't want to have uh, editions of La Joconde uh, because they, they didn't want to give uh, misleading uh, information that La Joconde was sold. Uh, 
uh, and even though you, 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 you create something that is uh, described as an edition, uh, there is this, uh, you know, mis, uh, maybe misleading information that maybe the Joconde is for sale. And let's say, for instance, if they sell uh, 1,000 uh, editions of La Joconde, okay, they put it on the market, people buy it, it's nice. But then maybe if someone uh, very rich decides to buy the 100 editions and to become the only owner of the 1,000 editions from the secondary market and claim that now he's the owner of the uh, La Joconde. Or uh, uh, if you do that also, you will, be, you will have a quote. So uh, La Joconde floor price would, would, would vary, would be lower when uh, Emmanuel Macron says something bad, would be, would be higher when uh, uh, you know, something else happened. And they didn't, they didn't want that. And I understand. Well, still in the French right, uh, everyone is, uh, 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 is allowed to sell La Joconde as an NFT because La Joconde is in the in, 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 uh, the in CC0 domain. So yeah. you can do it. Yeah, but uh, this, this would be an official La Joconde from the Louvre, which is different. Yes, of course. Okay, one more question. This one there is copyright for Kikabia because Kikabia wasn't uh, didn't die before uh, seven, more uh, than seventy years ago. Uh, so 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 as you spoke about Mona Lisa, uh, this is a sort of a five hundred years old uh, painting that you can all, all admire if we go to the Louvre Museum. But my, my question is um, regarding the evolution of technology. Because, for example, when Bill Gilder started his first you know, videos, you, can, you had DVDs, right, that you, you bought with Bill Gilder, and you know, nobody uses DVDs anymore. So I'm trying to understand how, how do you protect against evolution of technology on the NFT um, dongles or items that you get? This is an excellent question. How is it, Benoit? I think Benoit and Lung have thought of it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the, there is a sense that uh, blockchain is here to stay. Um, of course, it's still a young technology, so uh, we don't know. But uh, it's quite a solid technology. That there, uh, there, there are. If you look at Bitcoin, it's there. There are billions of, uh, of, of uh, you know value uh, on there. Uh, people really trust it, and they trust it for long. They feel it's going to be there for long. It's, they feel it's something like uh, you know electricity or or water in the pipes. You know, it's just uh, this feeling, and this will never uh, this will never go out go back. But uh, it's a good question. I don't have. Sorry. I, I also I like to invest in TV. Uh, I think uh, yes. Hong Kong. Oh, yes. Okay. 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 Your question. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Question. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, I think it really depends how we can capture. It. The object data, for example, the, the sculpture, and so I let's say painting. painting yeah, painting. because I I I I just assume that because I I'm actually working with a lawyer on an NFT project. I'm about to uh, NFT all my physical and digital uh artwork into NFT, and then that the day I just had a chat with the lawyer, and then we were, we were discussing what we should put on the COA, the certificate of the authentication. And then what I'm thinking about, because of the development of the technology, uh, uh, I believe in the future, we can just use the phone to really scan the whole thing. And then there's a, could be that open source platform that, that you can actually make your own uh, COA. That's what I believe in. It's, but it's already happening right now. You can okay. just use open COA. Just personally, I totally disagree. The the but the linkage between the physical that uh, there there is no linkage between physical and the NFT. Because for me, or for a lot of collectors, I I mean, I've worked in galleries before. Mm. A lot of collectors also agree that NFT has no value. It's just like the like speaker says, NFT is merely a certificate for art for digital artworks. So I think. I, I completely agree that NFT is like very positive. It's a very good technological advancement to the art community. But I think what we should consider about is how yeah. to utilize this technology into traditional artworks as well. Because like we all know, artists do not have artist reason, right? 
Yeah. But if we can apply NFT to physical artworks or conventional artworks, we can bypass mm. the legislation system and directly utilize that uh, mm. artist research right into conventional mm. artworks, just like in Asia. Just like I would like to answer that because I think it's a very interesting point, which is that what you're saying is actually, in my opinion, quite correct. And actually, I happen to have a few things. Um, and um, NFT is a certificate, right? Actually, when you have a piece of, of work, of art, you actually need a certificate if it's of any value, right? To actually be able to sell anyway on the market. But you do have a physical certificate, you know, saying that this, this is an authentic piece um, and it, it's necessary actually to sell it above its value. So it looks to me, from what I understand, that the NFT is a mean, it's the certificate. What I think Benoit uh, and I forgot the yeah. piece are talking about is, it, it seems to me, is digital art. Yes. And that NFT is actually the mean to actually pass it on. And I'm quite unclear on that, actually, because so I understand digital art. I understand that it's that's, that's different. And, different. Um, and, and that's some interest, clearly, no doubt. Uh, for, 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 it, it, yes, it, it just, for me, it just and it is NFT just the certificate, the mean to actually pass it on, or is it the art itself? I mean, yeah, that's I think an important question. It's two things, and that's why, that's why we started yeah. the, the, the talk about what, what's NFT digital art because NFT, as we can, that's why the question is how NFT is revolutionizing art because of the copywriting thing and because yes, of the authenticity. For sure, for sure. But indeed, NFT now is applying in everything in fashion. Uh, you have actually now the, um, even the wine industry, how they want to identify yes, and uh, uh, authenticify their wine. So, so NFT is more broader. Yes. I think our question was just what it speaks to the case. Yes, which okay. I have, we have, we have yes. one. There. No. <laughs> can, I answer the, can I answer this question or do you have time? Keep French people. <laughs> yes, um, uh, sometimes the art is in the NFT. It's called on-chain on -chain art. So sometimes the, the artworks is 100% the NFT. This is one remark. It's not always the case, but it's sometimes the case. Uh, also, one important thing to understand is that the NFT is not only a certificate. It is the... the it is the signature of the artist. The artist signs the NFT, all right? They don't sign the file. They create the file, all right? But the file is not signed by themselves. The file, uh, if you just have the file, you don't know who made it. You don't, it could be uh, someone else. Once the artist creates an NFT and attaches this file to the NFT, the artist signs the NFT, doesn't sign the file. The file is not signed. The NFT is signed by the artist. So this makes a big difference but compared the, to just a certificate. The artist. You know, is the, 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 file, the, the NFT is the mean. I mean, the NFT is not a piece of art. It's the file that is a piece of yes, art, yes. right? Yes, that's why right. Can I can I add something? What what I find personally interesting is that with NFTs as certificates, what is very interesting to, to analyze is that there there is now a historical, a social, and a global existence and pertinence for digital art, which was not the case before. If you take the generation of net artists, no one among this generation made a career. They, they have, maybe they are 40, 45, 50 years old, and no one of them has made a career. But now uh, with NFTs, with these certificates, there is, the, the, these people, are interesting socially and at a global scale. What is also very interesting is that with the NFTs, there is this possibility to, to register certificates at global scale, which was not the case before. So which means that, of course, yes, it would be very good to use NFTs for physical artworks, only for artists to be able to get this money when their artworks are sold again. That is very important. But as it is global also, very interestingly for someone like me, uh, a historian of the global art market, is that suddenly there is a kind of new field of art, uh, very different from what it was before. Of course, uh, collectors, very big collectors knew uh, themselves and it was a kind of global jet set. But now, uh, this world that was so tiny and so so clubbish has expanded 
at a global scale. And, and we can see also that there is a kind of migration, migration of, of, uh, of kind of uh, migration of, of uh, cultural, not centrality, but cultural dynamism uh, to Asia, which is very interesting and, and also you are part of it because you organize this in, in, in Hong Kong. Uh, you see, the, the biggest collectors of NFT art, of crypto art, are Asian. They are young, they are male, they are Asian, they are blockchain entrepreneurs. I found that fascinating, very interesting, how this, this group uh, behaves, how they want to, like take revenge from the West, how they measure themselves to Elon Musk and, and, and this kind of people, what kind of artworks they collect, what, what, what is the content of the works they, they display, etc. And this is this social and global phenomenon that is interesting with NFTs. It's not only certificates or, or, or specific digital practices, it's a social and global phenomenon. Yes, thank you very much, Beatrice. Okay, we have one last question at the back. question is basically how do you see the difference between the, the digital artwork that are on the blockchain, fully on the blockchain and the links and the ones which are not? Because as uh, as mentioned, it's also expensive to basically mint the energy. And some artists might not, I mean some creator might not afford to, to afford to do it. Uh, so how do you see basically the yes the, the danger in a way and the yeah there, there are different qualities of NFTs, right? There are NFTs that are stronger than others. The strongest NFT is the, the on-chain uh, NFT uh, artworks, which means that the 100% of the artworks is code, and this code is registered on the blockchain. So there is nothing else than the NFT itself. So the, it's a, the artwork is the NFT. Uh, also, there are if you other NFTs where they have files, so files are not registered on the blockchain. Files are connected with the NFT through the mechanism of hash. Uh, when, you, when you have a digital image, uh, it could be a, just a, a simple JPEG or a long video. It's just a series of zero and ones. And this series of zero and ones, you can convert it into a, a hash, which is a, a, a string of uh, alphanumeric, which this string can be uh, registered on the blockchain. And this hash, only could only correspond to this image. So if you change one pixel in the image, it doesn't produce the same hash. So if you have the hash in the, in the NFT, in the blockchain, it is necessarily this image and it could not be another image. Sometimes because the image is, uh, is stored on a cloud, sometimes the image disappears, all right? But as a collector, you can make, uh, you can decide to download the image so you have it with you. So even if it disappears from the cloud, you still have it and you can still prove that it corresponds to the hash to the, of the NFT. It's a way to secure. But I can tell you if today you own an NFT from a very famous artist like Xcopy, which is one of the famous artists and the image disappears, but you still have the NFT. I can tell you the NFT will be worth a lot of money even if there is no image because it has a historical meaning because it is timestamped and signed. And in my opinion, even if the image disappears, this NFT will still have value. That brings us back to the question of art versus the money and the value, basically. Yeah. I'll bring us back, back to, to social phenomenon of NFT. What is valuable is to whom it, it, it belongs. And this is important. It, it, it has always been the same, an artwork is valuable because of who owned it and owned it and will own it. That's always, it's kind of a, it's a pedigree. 
an art work is worth its, its pedigree, not only what is painted or represented. And uh, maybe to conclude, do you think that, I mean, talking about the value of traditional art, is of course who owns it, but also where it has been exhibited. Uh, do you think it's something that we might see somehow, you know, in the digital world as well, where it has been presented on some digital platform or on some exhibitions? We might see. Sorry, I, I, the, the question was was cut. So basically, do you think that uh, the value of the NFTs and the digital art will also depend on where it has been exhibited and and how it has been presented as well? Because you know that's what. Yes, it will, and and it, it and it already does. If it's not the same, uh, if you exhibit it in uh, a with Benoit Couty, then with me. <laughs> so, no. But, uh, and what's good about it is that uh, because the blockchain is uh, very transparent, you, you can you can uh, have the full history and you can see who bought it first and then who it was sold to and etc. So it's a good way to audit. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you everyone for attending. And of course, if you have more questions, you can uh, let us know and we will address to our speakers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.